everyone, once again, good day. I would like to welcome you all to our to this session, and I hope that you are doing well wherever you are. And this time, we will be talking about your English module. So before we are going to head on to our discussion, I would like to request you to please bow down your heads as we seek the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, your grace amazes every day. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your kindness, and for providing us with good health with all, as always. Lord, at this time, once again, we would like to call upon your name to guide us, to be with us, Lord, as we talk, as we discuss, as we run through this another uh, subject in this module. Help my students together with their parents, loved ones, keep them safe, always their father. You be with us, Lord. Uh, for in every day. Thank you so much for all the assurance that you will answer this prayer. For this I ask in the loving name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So to start with, I would like to request everyone to please go to your English module. Okay? Go to your English module. As you are going to look here in my screen, this would be the first page that you can see in your English module. It says here, a modular approach in teaching. It is English for grade five. We have the learning design, the same learning design that you know already, which is the love, okay? Our topic or the module topic is propaganda. Okay, okay. Uh, I know that some of you are familiar with the word, but it has different connotation, but for others, it could be a positive one, but for others, it could be a negative one, depending on what propaganda. But first and foremost, I want you to think, what is propaganda? Okay. In your own words, think of propaganda. Okay. So let's start with your lean on. Okay. This is your devotional part, which I am going to read. Uh, the part of introduction. Today, you will learn how to distinguish truth and ha whole half truth or plain propaganda, good and bad. You will consider how propaganda is done to give information. The activities in, the, in this module will guide you to recognize propaganda as a way of informing people. When you will be able to recognize what this propaganda is, you will know how to decide when the information you are going to believe or what information you are going to believe and which or not. In life, we read more and more information, but how do you decide which is the truth and which one is hiding something? Is it okay to have propaganda or not? Let us find out. Okay. The Bible says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit but test the spirit to see whether they are from God or for many false prophets have gone out into the world. So let's begin. Okay, we need to pray first. Does Jesus care? As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her and said, don't cry. Luke chapter 7 verses 12 to 13. Does Jesus care about things that we are facing in our daily lives? What do you think? Does Jesus care? Does he care when we are sick? Does he cares when we are hurting? Does he cares when we are sad, when you are sad? These are the questions that we may ask when we are experiencing difficult times in our lives, right? Have you tried that, my dear students? Frank Greif was a Methodist minister who had a reputation of being a cheerful person. In fact, among his friend and fellow ministers, he was known as the Sunshine Minister. One of his friend, Austin C. Miles, described Reverend Grave this way. In spite of, his, of this cheerful attitude, Reverend Grave sometimes faced some difficult times in his life. It was during such a time that he asked himself a question. Does Jesus cares? 
As he struggled with that question, he wrote the hymn, Just Does Jesus Cares? The refrain of the hymns answered that question like this. If you know how to sing this song, and I will not sing, you know me already, class, and I didn't have that good voice to sing this one, but let me read to you the, the verse of the song, uh, the, the chorus part, which says, Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Despite of those questions, what happened? It motivated him to write this song, which has which says Jesus cares. This lesson will give us a real example of how much Jesus cares. Soon after he had healed the servant of the Roman centurion, Jesus and his disciples traveled toward a town called Nain. As they approached the town gate, they met a funeral procession with a young man was being carried out. He was the only son of his mother who was a widow. He was she was very sad because he was left with no one to care for her. When Jesus saw her, his heart was touched and he said to her, don't cry. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it. Young man, get up. The young man sat up and began to talk. Jesus gave him back to his mother and the young man and his mother turned around and went back home. Now, that is an excellent example of how much Jesus cares about his people. Jesus cares for you and me too. Remember that always. Even in the midst of struggles, in the midst of problems, remember that there is somebody, there is someone who is watching you, who cares about you. The prophet Ezekiel said, the soul that sins will surely die. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whosoever lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus cared so much for you and me that he died on the cross so that we might have eternal life. Father, we thank you for our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. We are thankful that no matter what difficulties we may face in life, we can say with confidence, Oh yes, He cares. I know He cares. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, what a beautiful promise, right? Now, let's continue. How does Jesus care for your life? At this point of time now, try to reflect. How does Jesus care in your life? Okay, write a simple uh, answer in this line that you can see down. Uh, it could be a short one as long as it's real and true that it's happening at this moment, it would be fine. Okay, now let's go directly to your most essential learning competency or your MELT. The pupils or you must have determined ideals that is or are explicitly used to influence viewers of propaganda. You have your enabling competencies. At the end of this module, you must have defined what propaganda is, distinguish and demonstrate the use of propaganda techniques in local setting. And for your performance task, you, it's community awareness. You will make a collage poster or video to promote your ideas or something in your community. Okay, here are our learning targets. So these are your learning targets. These are the skills that you need to master as we go along and finish our module task. May God bless all of you as we run through in this module. I hope that it could help you. Okay, let's start with your warming up. Okay, it's interesting. Try to look at the picture. What can you see? Okay, we have different opinions, but there is a message that this picture is trying to say. Okay, try to study it for a minute or a minute and then try to understand what message is it trying to say or it is trying to convey you as a reader. Okay, then after that, you are going to write your reflection here. What can you say about this image? There is no wrong 
or answer in this part since we have different perspective in every situation it could be what i saw is not the thing that you see right but then as long as we can see in every angle in this picture that your answer is within that i would consider it right i hope that you can that you got my instruction now let's go to your optimized knowledge propaganda okay definition of propaganda mom what is propaganda when i ask this once my student say that when I asked, well, how do you understand the word propaganda? One of my students uh, told me that that is a fake news, okay? Maybe that's how he see it. But now let's define propaganda first for the sake of everyone. We will not see only the negative side of it. Let's try to understand it in a sense of the word and how it is being used, okay? Now let's go to the definition of propaganda. Letter A, it is the spreading of ideas, information, or humors for the purpose of helping or injuring an institution, a cause, or a person. Remember, it could help the information that the being spread out could help or could destroy, depending. Okay? Letter B, it presents ideas, facts, or allegations which spread deliberately to further one's cause or to damage an opposing cause. Also, it is a public action having such an effect. Remember, it could be a fact, the propaganda could be a fact, or just a simple allegation. It could damage or it can build somebody. Okay. Next, the third definition says it is spread of information or ideas with the purpose of influencing feelings or action okay remember now it's clearly stated based on the definition that propaganda is not merely fake news right it depends of it depends on what is the goal in spreading that information what is the motive of the one spreading that propaganda? Is it to promote somebody? Is it to build an institution? Or to destroy the opposing party? To destroy someone's reputation? Or to damage somebody, right? So propaganda class is not merely a fake news. Some propaganda are facts. Some are merely allegation. What we need to do as a reader, as a listener, we need to filter all of the truth and all of the lies within the propaganda. We need to be very mindful receiver of those information. Now, let's continue. Why use propaganda? What is the purpose? Nga ah, kinahanglan magamit of propaganda. Number one here, propaganda is a strategic and intentional. Strategy. Kag tinuyuan. That is intentional. Okay? Next, propaganda aims to influence attitude, opinions, and behavior. Why? If you are spreading something to others, what did you do? what is your motive to influence that person's that audience feelings to convince them that the information that you are spreading is true to discourage them and many more propaganda can be beneficial or harmful as i told you a while ago propaganda means truth or half truth or lies okay it could be the propaganda is 100 percent lies 100% truth, or it could be half lie, half truth. Next, to be successful, propaganda taps into our deepest value, fears, hopes, and dreams. Okay, amuna ang gina target. Propaganda will taps into that deepest value as a human being, which hopes, dreams, and fears. Amuna gina use nila usually. And the last one, but most important of all, propaganda uses several means and techniques to accomplish its goals. There should be a goal. There is be a motive why that certain propaganda was being spread 
there is a purpose nga aman nga na spread man siya because there is a goal. And they are going to to use everything, all the techniques just to reach to meet up that goal that they have in mind. Remember that one. Okay. Now, let's answer the question. Is propaganda good or bad? Okay. As for others, for those who dwell on the negative side of propaganda, it is negative. But for those who are but for those who are looking or using propaganda as a means of spreading good news, it could be good, right? But you, me, we need to be very good in um, uh, filtering all this propaganda. We need to identify what is the truth and what is the bad behind it. What we need to do is to be very careful. Again, let me read. Propaganda uses any means to accomplish its goal, which might not necessarily be bad. Propaganda is a tool. Remember, that is propaganda is a tool and it is at the disposal of the company, organization, or, or party and put it in place regardless of the fact that its scope might be more or less noble or morally acceptable. Therefore, contrarily to common belief, propaganda might be used for God, good causes as well. But mind you, while, while teaching this topic for how many years, most of the first impression of my student is that propaganda is a bad one, okay? But again, there is always two sides of the coin. Others may use it in a bad way, but of course, there is a good side in it. Why do you usually think it's it a bad, bad way? Because when you when you hear the word propaganda, it is related to, to politics. That's why for them, it's not that good. It's not that appealing. The word is not that appealing. But I want to change that mindset now. That propaganda is not a bad thing, but it could be depending on the goal of that propaganda being spread out. Remember that one. Now, where can we usually see propaganda? Oh, di natin sila makita sa gara. While propaganda is most evident in times of war, it is constantly being used as a political and social means in even less obvious way to influence people's attitude. If this is currently evident with all the election commercials on TV, where the candidates are using propaganda techniques to elevate themselves above their competitors. That's what I told you a while ago. Another place propaganda is being exploited is using the media in its portrayal of countries, countries that have nuclear technology, modern televisions, films, computer, tax machines, poster meetings, door to doors canvassing, handbills, buttons, billboards, speeches, flags, street names, monuments, coins, stamps, books, plays, comic strips, poetry, music, sporting event, events, cultural events, company reports, libraries, and awards and prizes, and many more are being used as a medium or platform in spreading that, spreading that propaganda. It is most likely that some of these media uses are surprising, but only show how easy it is not even recognize propaganda as such. Um, so, meaning, it's not only that propaganda is being used by, poli by political way, but it is very rampant now in social media and any forms, right? Now, let's go to your exercise number one. Choose one out of three definitions of propaganda and write it on the space provided and give the reason why you have chosen this definition. Okay, we have the definitions here. Okay, as you can see, let's go back to this part. This is the three definitions about propaganda that I talked a while ago. What you need to do is to choose one definition for you that really help you understand the meaning of the word propaganda and of course give the reason why you choose that definition nga mo na nga definition imong choose okay let's continue reading your way propaganda techniques it is entitled don't don't be fooled by propaganda recognize it okay don't be fooled by propaganda 
recognize it. It is posted on April 3, 2014 by Ray Clore. I read, as Christians, we realize there is a spiritual war being waged for the hearts and minds of humanity. This war is waged using television, radio, and all the types of media. While we fight using the word of God, Satan will use any method to try to win. Con constained among the many tactics used by the enemy, it is the tool of propaganda. While people can engage in propaganda either, either unknowingly or unknowingly, it is important that we are able to identify if it is true or not so that we will not be deceived propaganda is used by the world leaders politicians pundits and pr firms it can be found almost everywhere so watch out in third john 9 9 10 there is a blueprint that evil men have used throughout the ages to obtain and hold on to power it's a two-step method and it goes like this Attempt to discredit your enemy and control the environment of the people over whom you wish to gain power. Separate and isolate people, especially those who could become a threat. Propaganda is the tool they use. Here are a few propaganda techniques that you should know. They are used commonly because they are effective. Knowing them will give you an antidote to counteract their poison. Okay, there are many techniques that this propaganda is using because they know that this is effective. But if we know what all of them, uh, then you can we can give the antidote. Okay. Okay, number one, we have here the first. If you can't win the argument, attack the person. Okay, that is the first one. Where do I go to get my reputation back? Then attack the person if you can't win the argument. That was the question asked by Ray Donovan, President Reagan's labor secretary. After he was found that guilty of corruption and charges, it didn't matter. Those who paid little attention to the issue just remembered he was charged with corruption and assumed that he was crook. Those who did pay attention had it in the back of their mind. What if the jury got it wrong and this man really is a criminal? Attacking the person's character had done its work. If you cannot win, attack the person personally. That is one way of techniques that propaganda is using. Next, put out the message over and over again and then you, until you want to vomit. Sige, sige, hon mugit. Drill it into people's head until it becomes a second nature. Once it's hardwired into a person's brain, they will act accordingly, even if it's complete baloney. If you tell a lie being enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it according to Joseph Goebbels, na si Minister of Propaganda. Muna ilang kinabuhat sa mga propaganda, uh, muna ilang ginaubra. They keep on repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat again. And those lie partly become a truth to other people. Next, the black and white fallacy. There are only two choices. What if your child came up to you and see, said, if you don't give me candy, then you don't love me. Oh. What would be... What, what, would that be valid? Are there more than two choices in this situation? Politicians in America are found fond of using this one. It seems no matter what the position of one political party, the other party automatically takes the opposite view. When you are on the other side, what the other side believe, you need to contradict that one or else you will not be in the opposing team, right? Next, you have here the half truth. The man punched me in the face, but conveniently left out is the fact it was only because he was first attacked with a knife. That changes the situation, doesn't it? You can deceive people without lying. The devil has been known to quote scripture. Okay, see in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. Okay, you will be the first who will complain, where in fact you are the first who will take the action. And that is only a simple re taste of what you did, right? Next. Okay. Those are some of the techniques. Okay. We have here different, again, number one, we have here different techniques. Another one is 
Name calling or stereotyping. Giving a person or an idea a bad label by using an easy to remember prerogative names. This is used to make us reject and condemn a person or idea without examining what is the label really means. Example, Republicans. Example, three hunger, Nazi, in, in, envi environmentalist, special interest in group. Those are name calling, stereotyping. Managina ubra sa mga propaganda. Number two. Virtue words or glittering generality. Uh, these words are used to dope us into accepting and approving things without examining the evidence carefully. Example, natural, the word demographic, the word organic, the word scientific, ecological, sustainable. Look at these words. They are very glittery, right? Which can help people believe it right it's more fun in the philippines so of course if you are giving a camping a tagline to promote something of course you need to use good and positive words who would use negative one if you are promoting somebody someone next testimonials of course in testimonials when someone respected a celebra celebrity or any famous people uh, claims that an idea or product is good or bad, this technique is used to convince us without examining the fact more carefully, right? When your favorite actress, for example, here in your module, let's have, uh, for example, the San Marino, you have there Chris Aquino. Chris Aquino is very famous, right? Humble lang si Chris Aquino. Love ng heart ko ang San Marino. With that word, all of the fans will be screaming, oh, I I'm going to try San Marino because Chris Aquino is promoting that. Okay? That is test example of testimonials. Next, number four, plain fox. This is a way that a speaker convinces an audience that an idea is good because they are the same ideas of most people like yourself. Example, this is the will of the people, most Americans. Another example would be when a speaker tells a story about a family or people that are just like you to reinforce the speaker's point of view. When you are convinced because uh, your situation now is the same with the speaker's situation. Or they are using generalization, like you are in the same, then you will believe what that person be believes, right? Next, you have number five, the bandwagon. This is a common propaganda method is when the speaker tries to convince you to accept their point of view or else we will miss out on something good. The bandwagon techniques is often used in advertisement, but more and more also transposed into populist speeches and claims of political rhetoric. Okay. Um, bandwagoning is that you are this is the techniques used in many advertisement also. Like there is common method when the speaker tries to convince you to accept their point of view. Next, number six, we have the artificial dichotomy. This is when someone tries to claim there are only, to, tries to claim that there are only two sides of an issue and that both sides must have equal presentation to be evaluated. This technique is used to dope us into believing there is only one way to look at an issue when in fact there may be many alternative viewpoints or sides like most of the propaganda techniques is sim simplifies reality and therefore distorts it often to the advantage of the speaker and classes example is the intelligent design versus evolution control per se next we have the hot potato this is an inflammatory, often untrue statement or question used to throw an opponent of guard or to embarrass them. Example of that, have you stopped beating your spouse? That is too personal, right? When will you pay your tax you own? The fact that it may be utterly untrue is irrelevant because it still brings controversy to the opponent. Those are very personal attack. That is the hot potato. Number eight, the scapegoat. Okay, this is often used with guilt by association to deflect scrutiny away from the issue. It transfers blame to one person or group of people without investigating the complexities of the issue. Example, George W. Bush got into Iraq. President Reagan caused the national debt. Okay, try to think of it. 
they put the blame only to one person without further investigation if that issue is true or not. So that is what we call scapegoat. Instead of realizing the reality, the truth behind it, they pinpoint that to only one person or a group of person. That is what we call scapegoat. Number nine, we have the fear or guilt. Of course, the people don't want war. Who would want war, right? But after all, it's the leader of the country who determined the policy, and it's always a simple matter to drag the people along, whether it's democracy, a fascist dictatorship, or a parliament, or a communist dictators. Voice or no voice, the people can always be brought to the bidding of the leaders. That is easy. All you must do is tell them that they are being attacked and denounce the pacifists to lack of patriotism and exposing the country to greater danger, right? Either you are going to, to be with them or not with them. Next, you have an end. That is the last, fear or guilt. You have nine on the list here. After that, you will proceed to your exercise number two. Distinguish the following propaganda techniques by encircling the letter of the correct answer. Okay, what you need to do is to, if you need more understanding on the nine techniques that we have and the far and the other types that we have before you what what you need to do is to um reread it again and understand so that you will so that it would be easy for you to understand and answer the question here in exercise number two okay let's start from item number one it says which of this is a propaganda techniques that transferred the blame to one person or group of people without investigating the complexities of the issue you have here letter a scapegoat letter b fear or guilt letter c hot potato okay understand the definition i already explained all of those i hope that you get something out of that and you can answer the questions here, okay? What you need to do is to encircle the letter of the correct answer. Number two, what propaganda techniques gives a person or an idea a bad label by using an easy-to-remember prerogative? Letter A, hot potato. Letter B, name-calling. Letter C, artificial dichotomy. Number three, which of this is a common propaganda method that the speaker tries to convince the listener to accept his or her point of view or else he will not or he will, he will miss out something really good? Letter A, plain fox. Letter B, testimonials. Letter C, it's Ben Wagon. Number four, which of these words used to dupe the audience into accepting and approving of things without examining the evidence carefully? Letter A, virtual words. Letter B, bandwagon. And letter C, hot potato. Number five, when someone tries to claim that there are only two sides of the issue and that both sides must have equal presentation to be evaluated, evaluated he is doing a or an a testimonials letter b artificial dichotomy and letter c scapegoat i hope that you do understand each of those number five when someone tries to claim that there are only uh Okay, let's proceed to number six. Which of this is a way of a speaker convincing an audience that an idea is good because they are the same ideas of the majority of the people like yourself? Letter A, Ben Wigan. Letter B, Plain Fox. And letter C, Hot Potato. Number seven. An inflammatory statement or question is used to throw an opponent off guard or to embarrass them is done in a or an. Letter A, hot potato, bleed, glittering generality, and C, stereotyping. That is for your exercise number two, okay? I hope that you can answer it perfectly. All the answers is there. We, we read that a while ago. Now, let's proceed to your exercise number three, okay? According to the article, don't be fooled by propaganda, recognize it. How can you recognize propaganda? Okay, uh, we read a while ago this uh, article which says that um, don't be fooled by propaganda, recognize it. Out of that reading, 
what you need to do is you are going to explain. Okay, how can you recognize propaganda? And how could you recognize truth, lies, and so on and so forth? Now, let's go to your validate learning. Exercise number one, identify the following techniques in propaganda. Write your answer on the space below, okay? The techniques is there already. We talked about that a while ago. It's the leader of the country who determined the policy, and it's always a simple matter to drag the, people's, the people along, whether it's a democracy, a fascist dictatorship, or a parliament, or a communist dictatorship. Write your answer in the space provided. All of the answers are mentioned a while ago. Number two, it is a classic example, is the intelligent design versus evolution controversy. I've read that part. Number three, it transfers blame to one person or group of groups of person without investigating the complexities of the issue. Number four, this is an inflammatory statement or question used to throw an opponent of guard to embarrass them. Number five, giving a person or an idea a bad label by using an easy to remember prerogatives or names. Number six, this method is when the speaker tries to convince you to accept their point or views, a views or else you will miss out something good. Number seven, this technique is used to convince us with examining the fact more carefully. Number eight, this is a way that the speaker convinces an audience that the idea is good because they are the same ideas with most of the speaker like yourself. Number nine, these words are used to dupe us into accepting approving of things without examining the evidence carefully. And last but not least, we have here number 10. This is when someone tries to claim there are only two sides of an issue and both sides must have the equal presentation to be evaluated. Okay, the same with the previous um, activity that you did. What you need to do is to identify what nicknames being used in all of the statements. Now let's proceed to your exercise number two. In buying certain products, sometimes we are swayed by who endorses it, right? Did this happen to you? What makes you decide to buy that product? Okay, write your answer here in the box and there is line provided for you. Exercise number three. The effort of the current government is to clean up Manila Bay so that it, it will be more useful to the people. The putting of the dolomite in Manila Bay is just a portion of the plan. Now the question, what you need to do is you are going to conduct an interview with older people, people and younger generation about these issues. And your own view of this Manila Bay rehabilitation project beneficial to the people of Manila, okay, ask them the question. For example, you are going to ask your mom, your dad, your grandma, or your grandpa. You're going to ask them, grandpa, on your point, on your own point of view, is the Manila Rehabilitation Project beneficial to people in Manila Bay or in Manila? Or ask them that question and record their answers in this space provided for you. Okay, now let's go to your empower self. Letter A, making decisions. Please refer to the picture on the right side. Choose between world and God. Why have you chosen this? Okay, in the right portion, you can see a picture. There is a person which is in the valley of decision in which a way to follow. The, on the, in the left way, there is the problems and the, the right, there is a solution. In the left, there is world and in the right, there is God. Which way you are going to choose and why you are going to choose that way? Please write your answer on the space provided. Letter B, will you have your community promotion? Think of things, places, project, or idea that you would like to promote in your community. You can make a poster, drawing, or video about that one. Okay, you can have the following option. You can make, or either, if you want to make your own, it's okay with us. It's okay with me. As long as you are promoting... Uh, a portion or a part of your community that you think is very important or effective for somebody to 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 see that part of your community. Letter A, oh, yang, what you need to do, care for the environment. If you are making something that is, uh, it has to do with caring the environment. Letter B, helping the victim of floods, earthquakes. And letter C, promoting your favorite Bible character. Again, it could be a video, a poster, or a drawing okay that promotes okay 
your com that you would like to promote in your community like there is a an activity about caring for the environment you can take a picture you can draw about that one okay next is the rubrics what you have here is the rubrics of your uh the, the rubrics of your uh poster drawing or video the ideas the organization the expression the convention and legibility i am going to check your performance task basing on the rubrics that's why when you are um making your performance task please mind also the rubrics that be that is being given so that is your english for this module it's quite short this time but and i know that you can finish it earlier than expected and of course do not forget your prayer in this part is this father we thank you for loving our for our loving savior jesus christ we're thankful that no matter what difficulties we may face in life we can say with confidence oh yes he cares i know he cares help us help me help my student to distinguish what is right from wrong and help us to choose what is right in jesus name we pray amen okay that is how our module in English ends, my dear students. I hope that this video can help you in one way or another, that you can understand what really is a propaganda. So we will end this with a prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, our heart is full of love and joy for you've been with us throughout this meeting, throughout this session. We thank you for the guidance and continue, may you continually bless my students who are watching or listening this video together with their family. Forgive us, Lord, wherever we fail you. In Christ's loving name, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today and see you in your next video. Bye-bye.